Filipino black folks. And basically each one of these windows has a different uh, hertz absorption. And basically you've got your key here. Lower is the blue. And getting 15 hertz, uh, 20 hertz. We've got 5 hertz, 10. And what I'm going to show you is let me get this to America. There we go. Trying to scroll. Trying to scroll. Trying to scroll. Okay. And you get this interesting. And all this data is real. Yeah. What I'm really wondering is if you're actually able to locate with us getting that CME, if we actually get such a blast of different hertz of our do I our ionosphere uh, of radio signals basically coming from the sun and then plus also from the satellites possibly either that or we're getting a very rare freckles of then I mean Hopefully you can see it pretty good. You need to really watch this on full screen. I right? always say that just on just about every one of the videos, but I'm trying to see if I can pump up here in size on the toolbar. But as you can see, as these as these play on each one of these, I got 10 hertz there, I got 15 there. So I'll try to minus these down after I get you to be able to see this good enough. That every one of these is a different hertz, and I got these videos playing on this data. And there's the 20 hertz one, so I guess basically I got them spread out here pretty good so that you can see them all. So, in a sense, we've got, if it ends up being that it is the downloads of, or the upload commands of satellites, but the reason I somewhat but at the same time, in order for security purposes, to try to fake different governments and different spy satellites and different spy, basically, signals from around the world of trying to see what satellites are saying to what, you're going to shift between different hertz. So I'm thinking right now, with the CME coming in, we get basically almost like a radar resonance out in space. Because we sure are getting, and let me minus these down as since you've seen these pock marks, these freckles of uh, the different 10 hertz, 15 hertz, and our absorption from the CME that we had come in. 25 and as you've seen that they basically end up putting off those little diamonds that you end up seeing flashing and even over here to the right you're getting a different shade over one shade the color key is here of how strong it is but it's still the 20 megahertz absorption there five there and and it's just, uh, wow, we're getting a natural radar uh, from, uh, so now that's what someone would want to do for a defense thing would be put uh, the same resonation all the way around Earth. And basically, it's going to be interesting to see who can and can't broadcast something like that. And basically, anybody could. So you just have to be able to have a satellite or enough satellites to uh, do that. And then you'd be able to see and counter measure just about any satellite. So for security purposes, I guess someone needs to hire me. <laughs> my own country, some uh, defense contracting company. Because basically, it's my discovery. But in a sense, and anyhow. So any, we're going back here. And I had this data going on total electron content coming in we get a flow of that we'll minus this down well then we'll take a look and see what we got for magnetosphere shot 
and there, there's ones that basically it's down a little slow probably I mean the computer get rid of some of these that were really playing earlier and then there is I can blow this hopefully we'll get the tool to work because you'll be able to see but we had it 2.5 megahertz over in Australia now like I was trying to tell them that they were getting 20 to 25 Hertz and in all the way through the spectrum 5 10 uh, here a while back and I just didn't get around to making a daggone video of it so let me pump this up so you can see what I'm talking about you see Australia there and I don't know if I don't have that one playing but let's see if I can get it to play and then that should be recent data there and maybe we'd get a fresher one and since I've been waiting around to make this video I need to go ahead and pump all these up again and see what I get for fresh data I was trying to tell uh, so and as you see there we end up getting some lower and you can end up seeing splat splat and then that kind of corresponds with that Russian uh, that Russian satellite I've been seeing down there too there's a new satellite that it's been hanging around down over Australia and it's a Russian uh, put up satellite and so forth and I can show you what I was trying to show you at the very end of the last video but basically that CME is almost like a catcher's mitt as you see all the magnetic lines here along here top and bottom and basically the sun is that CME has been a gigantic magnetic suction cup to uh, Van Allen belts are, you can basically see the Van Allen belts these are basically the Van Allen belts the magneticals on the sun and then that CME that's come in on this is pretty much a big suction cup boom you will not go nowhere earth so and then there's a five megahertz one pop out of that and then speed up a little bit because I basically had a bunch of layers because I popped in here and was looking at these earlier and I do think that there's that one I had playing in Australia and we'll also get what we got for data down here on the jewel heating north of the south pole That's recent. So as we got it, so we'll take a look at our magnetosphere. We'll take a fresh cut on that. Here's your North Pole. That's basically our coronal eye as we go through space. So that's the front end of that you won't see. This is the angle you won't see when I give you a magnetosphere cut. So let me go ahead and give you that. That, that's the eyeball that you won't see because that will be covered up okay and there's a good signature of us getting the last of that CME action and us doing our 66,000 miles an hour which is about 6,000 know, I'm very repetitive on that but the normal average for Earth's travel through space is 60,000 miles an hour okay? and we rotate yes we rotate to the east to the sun but we also do a bullet pattern as we go along through we spiral like a bullet but we always spin to the east and it matches the spiral of the sun I mean that's where we stay magnetically connected and as you see the Van Allen belts here right now in a fresher shot of uh, what we're doing through space and as you can see the our plasma coronal out way out in front of earth is heating up basically that's more than likely the CME action off of the sun that we have just got the CME that's come in on us so and here you can see our speed on our sun I mean on the CME with the solar wind up and down very erratic and the density also pretty much matching with the uh, solar wind speed because of the CME so and this is our positive negative magnetic connection North Pole there and this is just the dynamic pressure okay this is not at the CME map okay but as you can see there is some wild pressure which basically we get pressure from CMEs dramatically 
but this is not CMEs. This is just the pressure, okay? Dynamic pressure only. No CME in this map, okay? This is the dynamic pressure of space, okay? In Earth, in the magnetical, the magneticals, okay? And the, the other planets that get connected to this, and also where we put the satellites at, out in certain magneticals to stay, to hold them too. So, that's dynamic pressure only, okay? Not a CME map, this is dynamic pressure. Okay? And that's Earth hanging on to its magnetical out there in space. Positive, negative on the south pole. That's why our wind gets more when we get CMEs, it gets more intense. But we still get intense wind here alone, but remember, we do know the sun is CMEing, and this is just a dynamic pressure one. So there's gonna be some wild wind in this here when this and here we are and then we'll pump up and get out in here into the space and basically i'm not hiding anything with the magnifier basically this is what we want to look at we want to check out and try to see if we can get identify and get this stuff because we've seen this stuff pretty bright for quite a few days here now so we're going to get in and take a look at this stuff here and also there's mercury doing that action there you can also see that there is some very interesting stuff here because you know that that's not that far away from Mercury. It's hella miles probably, millions of miles, but it's still very interesting planets that are close somewhat to the sun on the back side. Now remember, this is billions and millions of miles that you can see. You can see into stuff that's not even in the sun's magnetical way out in space. This is a gigantic telescope we're looking at, it, basically. It's H1B that we're at there, behind. Okay, now let's go ahead and check out the, uh, the other side, the head. Now it's going to be really interesting to check this out in the next couple days and get the 21st and, and so on. Because I looked at this earlier and it's playing pretty slow right now. But uh, we get this wild, huge, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I understand why it's not playing faster. We get this from the sun. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see what hits the Mercury and what doesn't hit Mercury because we don't get the full extent of it because it cuts off on time from the end of the 20th. So the 21st is going to be pretty damn interesting to check that action out. Basically, this is the other angle of this stuff that we're seeing right there. So we'll have to end up trying to see it in A once it disappears from B. You just back up the video because I was on B on the back side. And this is pretty much the same stuff down there, that frame thing below there, that we're seeing. So, getting some great glimpses into space out there. See if we can end up matching any of that stuff up. And like I say, I think this is Vega. This is a pie. I think that's Vega. Vega is bright and big. Either that, or that could be Vega, because Vega is somewhere in this shot around by Mercury. Okay, so it's either here or there. That could be Vega, or that could be Vega. Okay, and otherwise, I mean, it could end up being down here too. But I really kind of doubt it. It should be high. So let's see what else we got for shots. Taking a look off into space in here. There's tons of stuff to look at. Now, what we really don't think, I mean, I really don't know if that's Polydeus there or not. Let's take a zoom up. Get in there and take a look. See what we got going on, if that's Polydeus or not. But I really kind of doubt that that's Polydeus. I think Polydeus is up higher. Look could be wrong. Maybe this, that, or that. Something's plebeius around here somewhere. And as you see, we're getting a great look out way out in the space of tons of stuff all at one time because it's just billions and billions of miles and that can be seen here. But you, you do see what's, I mean, what you can see big and bright to the forefront is big and bright and should be, even if it is the way in the back, you see how huge it is. And then also there's stuff that should be somewhere. Now Venus is big and large, looks 
because of this the sun and the super giants is put the brightness of the sun in the super giants is putting off and then also that it's closer to the to the uh, telescope to this to the satellite and as you see the